Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. It is Friday, April 18th at 2.36 in the morning. Why am I recording at 2 o'clock in the morning? I'll tell you momentarily. But first, let's go up here and talk to this guy. We are headed to South Figaro. Yes, return to the castle that's buried underground. I never understood that as a kid. I still don't understand that. <laughs> but, anyways, since last time, our group of heroes here pulled some pretty fancy evasive maneuvers. And were able to elude their pursuers once again and make their way to this cave here. With a recovery spring. Full heal to everyone in your party. I like it. Uh, it's a good place to level grind if you feel so inclined. Um, I don't think that's necessary, because uh, this game is pretty easy overall, and as long as you have Edgar using auto crossbow every round, nothing in here is going to present a challenge to you. Yeah, really nice damage. And the, the damage from his tools is not reliant on his weapon power at all, so you could put him in the back row, so he takes less physical damage. But he could still do full damage with his tools, so that's very nice, and that's what I'll be doing for pretty much the remainder of the game, as far as Edgar is concerned. He is one of my favorite characters, especially early on in the game. Later on, yeah, he kind of falls behind when magic becomes more prominent, but for right now, he is a beast. I usually am about two levels higher when I play this game, but the only real difference is we'll have some more HP, and that's it. It's nothing critical. Now before you open this chest, and every chest in this cave, I'm going to do a save right here. Just like in the Narsh Caverns, all the chests here, if you save them for later, the contents will be upgraded to a better item. But just for reference sake, I will show you what you can get now, and tell you what you can get later. And you can decide for yourselves what you want to do. In this one, we get a tincture. You might remember that restores 50 MP. But I do not want that. Later on, that becomes a bolt rod. And if you wait even longer, that upgrades yet again to a hero's ring. Which is very nice. Hero's rings increase your magical and your physical damage by 25%. One of my favorite accessories in the game. So I'll be saving that treasure box for way later, so we can get that. So yes, it is 2 o'clock in the morning, and I decided to play Final Fantasy VI because I went into work. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I work third shift. I'm supposed to go in at midnight. And we're there until 8.30, sometimes later in the morning. But I misread the schedule, and I'm off tonight. Which would have been nice to know prior to you know, sleeping earlier in the day. So Tara gained a level, and she learned Antidote, all right. No. So yeah, I'm wide awake, and I wanted to play video games. I thought I'd record a few episodes for you guys. Over here to the right, we get another treasure chest. This one also contains a tincture. If you wait till later, that becomes an ether, which is just a better version of a tincture. Restores more MP. So I'm gonna hold off for that. Hey, preemptive strike, all right. That should finish the battle for us, hopefully. Yep, thanks, Edgar. Man, that auto crossbow is so good. It's nice, though, that I have the night off. I've been uh, fighting the cold the last couple days. So if I sound different, that's why. Um, but it'll be nice to have the night off so I can stay home and relax, drink some tea, which is what I'm doing now. I have some honey, lemon, ginseng tea here, which is making my throat feel a lot better, because I've been coughing quite a bit. And I have a sore throat, and I hope it's not strep. Here we get a phoenix down. Later on, that becomes an X potion, but I'd rather have the phoenix down now, just because I am a little bit underleveled. Um, I think it'd be nice just to have that extra revival item to fall back on in case I need it. And healing is much more abundant than it is than reviving right now. Speaking of which, we want to heal everyone. Blue Thief can steal, hopefully get a potion. 
and we'll just go with auto crossbow once again. See, so yeah, I've been fighting a sickness the last couple of days, so I got I've been having that going on. Kind of sucks. So I'm gonna use tonight just to kick back, relax, chill, drink some tea, take some medicine, and uh, play some video games for you guys. Yeah. And this is the South Figaro Cave. <laughs> yeah, very short, very easy. And over here we have a little village. But before we go in there, a couple new enemies out here. Rhinotars. These guys have quite a bit of HP. But it's something we can't handle. We're gonna use a noise blaster to confuse him. That almost always works, um, which is pretty nice. Mega Ball! Oh, that's not very nice at all. Okay, don't confuse these guys. <laughs> uh, let's try Poison. Uh, you can rarely steal a Mithril Claw from this guy. Uh, like other previous Final Fantasy games, a lot of enemies have two items to steal. A common steal and a rare steal. Luckily, the rare steals in this game aren't like a 1 in 256 chance like they were in Final Fantasy IV. No, it, but it, it could take you a couple minutes at least to steal. And even then, you might only get the common steal. I wouldn't go out of my way to get that Mithril Claw, but you can if you want to. Just go with Auto Crossbow. This is one of the enemy formations I was looking for, Rodox. This will come in handy later on. Oh, did it kill them all? What do they have? Like, 3 HP left? <laughs> yeah, these guys only have around 118, 120 HP. So Edgar is just barely not strong enough. But okay, we fought the Rodoxes. That's what I wanted to do. Hey, who's that guy? He looks like a ninja. Hey, I can't walk diagonally. What's going on? Well, looks like he went into that bar there. We'll go there soon enough. But first and foremost, we want to come to the relic shop, or the accessory shop. Double your walking speed. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this game's pretty silly. But it, it's a nice change from, you know, Fantasy Star 4. Don't get me wrong, I love Fantasy Star 4, and that gave it a lot of humor, too. But this game overall is just, it's more lighthearted in general. And here we get a little brief description of a couple of the accessories in the game, but I'll go over those when we get them. Yeah, we want to buy sprint shoes. They allow us to well, double our walking speed on the world map and in dungeons, so that's very nice. Um, goggles protects you against dark or blind. Jewel ring protects against blind and petrify. Star pendant protects against poison. We want to pick up two of those. And True Knight protects members who are low on HP. It's basically the cover command from Final Fantasy 4 and 5. But it only works if somebody's in critical condition, so... Gotta keep that in mind. Let's give Terra the Sprint Shoes. As you can see here, now we can run. Yes! Take a moment to save my game real quick. Now that Edgar's alive and well. And here we get our first dose of the world map music. I like this theme. It's very nice. I like all the music in this game, but you guys already knew that. So, anyways. Now, once again, all the items you can find here, if you wait until later in the game, will be upgraded. So I'm going to do a quick save here so I can show you guys what you can get now. By the way, this is the last time where we'll be doing this. They don't do it throughout the whole game, thankfully. But in that barrel, we can get a tonic. Come down here for a soft potion that will cure somebody if they're stoned. Out of my way. Here we get a green cherry. That'll cure the imp status. Um, it's basically toad. It renders your physical attacks nearly useless, and you can only cast, I think, the imp spell. Here we get an eye drop and an antidote. Both of those pretty self-explanatory there. I think there are two more items that we can get. Tonic. And we want to come. 
come all the way over here for a secret warp stone. Those are pretty cool. Those will cast escape, allowing you to essentially just warp out of a dungeon. So that could be useful. However, I'm not going to pick up any of those because I want better stuff later. Later on, you get things like tents, elixirs, um, X potions, things like that. Now, before we do some exploring, I want to hit up the weapon and armor stores. Let's see. We want to buy nothing. Actually, we're in pretty good shape there. We'll just pass down the mithril blade to Locke, which we had from Edgar. Okay, here we want to buy quite a few things. We want to get a Kung Fu suit for Locke, Cotton Row for Terra. We want to get three Plume Cats. Actually, no, we want to get five Plume Cats. Three for now, two for later. Let's get a Heavy Shield for Edgar there. So we have two Bucklers. Okay, we're good. Six more defense, four more magic defense, not bad. Plumed hat, a little better there. Um, you can press the L or R buttons to cycle through your characters on this uh, equipment screen, so that's pretty nice. Okay, I'll sell everything um, off screen in between episodes. Now that we have our first uh, set of new equipment, I thought this would be a good time to go over the status screen a little bit. We'll start with Edgar. Um, typical status screen, you have your total experience, and right beneath that, how much you need for your next level up. On the left, you have your basic stats, Vigor, Speed, Stamina, Magic Power. Uh, your Vigor is your Strength. I think that's changed in future translations to actually say Strength. Uh, vigor. That affects the damage of your physical attacks and physical abilities. Speed obviously affects how quickly your ATB gauge fills up. Stamina is a weird stat. It, it affects your character when they have the regen status effect, which gradually restores HP. It also affects the likelihood of them being hit by instant death. Um, it doesn't affect your defense or anything like that. So, it's kind of an oddball stat, but it's there. Um, I like how they gave it a unique function in this game. Magic power is probably the most broken stat in the game. I want to say 80% of all this, of the abilities in this game base their damage off of magic power. Even skills that you would think use your vigor to enhance actually use magic power. So, keep that in mind that a lot of this game is going to be determined by, well, the difficulty of this game is going to be determined by how well you develop your character's magic power, if at all. Um, battle power to the right, that's your, that's basically your physical attack power, or how strong your weapons are. In Edgar's case here, having that mithril spear that we stole from Mog is kind of a moot point, because, <laughs> yeah, he's not going to be using his physical attack pretty much ever, because his tools, as I already mentioned, they don't rely on his battle power to calculate their damage, so you never really have to buy new weapons for Edgar, hardly ever. So you could just sell a spear for money if you want. Um, or if you want to use it, you can put him in the front row and he'll do about 100 damage, which is pretty good for this point in the game. Defense is your physical defense, makes sense. Max defense being 255. Evade will go over later. Magic defense is your magic defense. Again, the cap is 255, and it does what you think it does. Your magic block percentage, that's your magic evade percentage. That basically is a flat percentage of how well you can block or dodge magic attacks. So, there we are. There's our status screen. Um, in future translations, like the Game Boy Advance version and the iPhone and Android version, each character has a job, which I believe is listed just next to their name. Um, I believe Edgar was like a, an engineer. They call Locke an adventurer, but he's, he's a thief. Um, as you can see here, his speed is 40, which is pretty good. 
Terra's like, I think her job is Magitech Elite, and hey, she's about to level again. Very nice. So yeah, there's that. And again, your job determines which of your uh, special skills your characters have. Whether it's tools, magic, steel, things of that nature. Here we have a secret passage. Hey, hey. And I'll talk to the townspeople and explore. Get out of my way. Move. Game? Okay, thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> Fast forward. Thank you. God, I hate that. <laughs> and here we have Shadow's theme. I love this theme. Well, let's talk to this guy. Yeah, I spoiled his name two seconds before we find out. S sue me. Man, this guy's rude. Hmm, you know him, Edgar? He owes allegiance to no one and will do anything for money. He comes and goes like the wind. Yeah, this is Shadow. One of my favorite characters in the entire game. As you can tell by both his sprite and his artwork here, and well, his name, he is a ninja. He is very fast, and if you're familiar with ninjas in Final Fantasy, he has the throw command, which is actually very well done in this game, but I'll go over that later. He slit his mama's throat for a nickel. Wow! Yeah, this guy sounds like a real, uh, a real scoundrel, man. And he has nothing to say. Can we talk to your doggy? <laughs> the dog eats strangers. Oh, man. Yeah, his theme here, the whistling, it kind of reminds me of the music from Wild Arms. Now, remember this for later. Very important that you do so. detailed this game is. You gotta look at the fire and the fireplace. You can see individual tiles on the floor. All the sprites are detailed. I mean, this game is very well done overall. You might remember in Figaro Castle, you can see swords hanging on the wall for decorations. Even the water looks very nice. It's got the transparency effect going on. It's Man, I love this game. Well, that's all I wanted to do in this episode. I just wanted to show you guys the town here, do a couple of tutorial segments, introduce you to Shadow, and that's, that's pretty much it. So next time, we'll finish exploring the town of South Figaro here, get some information on the Returner's Hideout if we can, because if you remember, that's, that's where we're going. So until next time, guys, I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.